Hi, today's good person to know is Claire Balding, OBE. She's a TV presenter, a journalist and a retired amateur jockey. And although Claire has always been involved in sports TV, specifically for horse riding, she was thrown in a completely different arena when she was one of the presenters for the 2012 Olympic Games. As you'll see in this video, Claire is very inspirational and she's not afraid to put her hand up and come up with completely absurd suggestions because as she put it, no idea is a bad idea. Claire won the nation's heart when she thought on her feet and got an interview with Chad's dad and I have to say I still remember that moment. She's also an advocate for ladies everything and it's completely true. It's so absurd that in this day and age sex inequality still exists and she's doing whatever she can to spread the word. Claire also has one of the most amazing personalities and I think people should learn to be as brave as Claire because you never know where you're going to get your lucky break. I hope you enjoy this video. I smile each and every time I watch it and I hope it gives you the get up and go too. So thank you for watching. Biggest event to ever happen in this country in our lifetime, uh, London 2012, the Olympics and Paralympic Games. There was a feeling that it was going to be a disaster. Then the most extraordinary thing happened and I think this was the moment. During that opening ceremony directed by Danny Boyle, when the green and pleasant land transformed into the Industrial Revolution, and we all just went, <gasps> from that moment onwards, we knew that London 2012 was going to be a success. The massive thing I've learned from it is right before the Olympics, and I'd had the, your usu my, my usual years, I landed on the Olympics in a panic because I just thought I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I haven't had the time to do enough homework. I'm not going to be presenting in a field where I'm really comfortable, where basically I could do it with my eyes shut. I was presenting from the swimming and I had been covering swimming and we'd done a fair amount of prep for it, but the, I wasn't sure that I was ready. What helped hugely was that the general public, so ignore the cynical press, ignore those that are always going to be negative about any major event, you will all have dealt with this, the general public felt connected, they felt that the Olympics belonged to them. I had though a, a, a sort of the, the moment where it, it really happened for me was yes I was presenting the swimming and trying to do so with great energy and verve because when I go back to the thing that I learned it was just dive in, just feel this event, be a part of it, try and communicate the excitement and the energy that you feel to the watching public, make them feel as if they are there. The moment for me that made the difference was thanks to this guy, Bert Leclerc, who when Chad beat Michael Phelps in the 200 meter butterfly in a race that Phelps hadn't been beaten in for 10 years, big, big shock. There's a guy up on the balcony going bonkers. And I say at that moment, we have to get him. Luckily I've learned from having been on telly a very long time. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just hold a microphone and say nothing. So I just held a microphone and off he went. Look at my boy, look at my boy. Unbelievable, this is the proudest moment of my life. But what he brought was love and pride, parental pride, and everybody watching connected with that. The Olympics had got underway. The opening ceremony was a success. You're on a roll. The confidence builds really, really quickly. And I do think this is true of any event. So the confidence then rolling into the Paralympics was huge because we had the tradition and the history of the Paralympic movement having started here at Stoke Mandeville, obviously with the wheelchair games. By the time we got to Glasgow last summer for the Commonwealth Games, there was not even a question mark over whether or not that would be a success. We also let the stars be stars. So the biggest star of the athletics world is Usain Bolt. We have always built up the stars. So Usain Bolt is as famous in this country as he would be in Jamaica or anywhere else. And of course, Usain Bolt has his trademark image. About a year before the Olympic Games, I was on a show called A League of Their Own on Sky, um, presented by James Corden, and Mo Farah was a guest, and we were discussing Usain Bolt and the fact that he has his whole thing going, and he's got his symbol, and everybody knows what it means, and James Corden said to Mo, we need to invent something for you. Now, I've always been keen to share ideas because I just think nothing is ever a bad idea. It's just an idea that might not work in that context. Put my hand up. So I know, I know, I know what he can do. He could do the M, the M from YMCA, the M, the M, the M from O. And then I sat there thinking, oh God, is that the stupidest idea ever? Because it is nerve wracking when you've just said that in front of a live audience and on camera. And James, quick as a flash, said, that's a great idea and we'll call it the Mobot. 
I think sometimes you've got to not be afraid to make a fool of yourself, not be afraid that, that an idea might not work in that context. Say it anyway, go with it anyway, try and find something that's fun. The untapped potential in this country in terms of talent is still women. I still think that women's sport can be better promoted, can certainly be better sponsored, can be better covered because it allows, it gives a chance for women to show that being competitive and ambitious, um, being dedicated, these are not male traits, they are human traits. It doesn't have to, we don't have to gender stereotype people into one role or another, and I think women's sport is incredibly important for showing that. After London 2012, some really odd things happened in my life. Um, and I don't, you, you still you look back on things, you don't really know why, but, but anyway, suddenly I, I got opportunities I had not had before. Part of the Radio 2 show, I get to interview various people, including Angelina Jolie, who now come to my best friend, uh, who I interviewed just before Christmas. I go to interview her, there's just her, me and my producer and John, who was doing her sound. She talks to me for 25 minutes. So I was stunned that she'd given so much time. And at the end of the interview, and this is where you can, I think, you always need to try and not network's the wrong word but influence people where you think you can so i'd asked her a question there's a scene in unbroken that features the berlin olympics and i'd asked her about it and she said oh, you're the only one to have asked me about the olympic scene and i said oh, it's because i because i work in sport and i present the olympics and i said i present the paralympics as well and i said to her it's always really upset me that american television doesn't cover the paralympics properly you you just give it like an hour's highlight show two weeks after it's finished i said we did live coverage every day highlight show every night we really cover it properly she looked at me she said who has the rights the american rights and i said nbc and she literally took out a pen and paper and wrote it down she said to me i can see if i can do something about that so that's power. The woman has power. I get to interview people like her and Baroness Trumpington as well, who's one of my favorite interviews of last year. And she said, Claire, my dear, you have to realize when you get to a certain age, it gives you the right to say what you think. And she, she looked at me and she said, so don't waste your time. I thought, I don't need to wait until I get old. Actually, the key is to try and say the things you think now. And not, you don't have to do it aggressively, but I think it's, terribly, it's certainly important to me to not just present things. It's to try and have, have an impact, to try and leave something that, that's worth, that, that has a long-term legacy. And for me, that's why I go on so much about the coverage of women's sport, try to increase the investment in it, the sponsorship of it. I think there are fantastic opportunities out there for companies. Um, but also to, to try and give girls the idea that there is a great career waiting for them if they want it in sport. I think the trick is not to be intimidated if you can be. In an interview situation where you're trying to make it intimate, try not to be intimidated, try to keep eye contact, try to remain relaxed even if underneath you are sweating profusely. A day before a major event, you will suddenly get in a panic, won't you? Everything, my God, it's not going to work, nothing's going to, this isn't right, I need to double check, I need to check that again, I need to make sure we've got that set. Is everybody coming? Comfortable? Have I talked to so and so? That's exactly how you should be feeling, and that's exact. That's the same as before any athlete competes in, in a big race. They will feel that way too. And from my days of riding as an amateur jockey, same thing. Really nervous. Then, when you literally or metaphorically get on the horse, everything goes in slow motion. When the event starts, I, I find, or when the red light goes on the camera and we're live on TV, everything actually go slowly, you have all the time in the world, you feel that you can cope with anything, you take in lots of messages, your brain is firing at a, at a different rate. It's the most brilliantly varied world to live in and I'm sure this will be something we all share because you're doing different things week in, week out. You have your regulars every year, you probably do the same major event certain time of year, your calendar probably works like mine does. So I think March, that's Crofts Cheltenham Festival, uh, you know, so on through the year. Oh, July, now they've moved Wimbledon, so July will be, first two weeks of July will be Wimbledon, then it rolls into the Open Golf, and so on and so on. But it's the variety, the people you meet. And now go back to, to, to the key at the beginning of what I learned from London 2012. Dive in, be present, feel it, understand where you are and what you're doing. Of all the conferences that I've been to, Claire's personality has struck me the most. She clearly puts her all in everything that she does. She's a really good presenter. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to see more and thank you for watching.